Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you all for being here. To our Lieutenant Governor, thank you. To our fabulous cabinet, we're uh, delighted to be joined by our Secretary of Technology, Services, and Security, Jason Snyder, our Secretary of Administration and Finance, Matthew Gorkowitz, our Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe, Secretary of Education, Pat Tutwiler, our Comptroller, Liam McNamara, our Chairs of our uh, chairs of the Joint Committee on Advanced IT, the Internet, and Cybersecurity, Representative Tricia Farley Bouvier, Senator, um, I don't see Mike Moore here, mm -hmm. but I do see mm -hmm. Senator Bruce Tarr. I see members of the Conference Committee and Senator Joe Comerford and uh, Representative Mike Finn, Representative Gregoire. Um, is there anyone else I haven't accounted for here? We. Um, we really are grateful, grateful that the legislature has sent this important bill our way because we're thrilled. We're thrilled to be here today to uh, first sign um, this piece of legislation. This is our five-year technology bond bill. It's called the Future Tech Act, and a little bit later today we'll be signing the fiscal year 25 budget. Um, but I'll tell you what, today is about Massachusetts going on offense, and it starts with the signing of today's bond bill, this Future Tech Act. We're investing in the things that we're already leading on here in Massachusetts. You know, recently, Massachusetts was voted the number one state in the country for innovation. Innovation has been our calling card from the beginning. That's important, and we want to continue to lean into that. Today, we're using innovation to take on some of the greatest challenges facing our state, facing our country, facing the world. And the Future Tech Act is an example of how we do that. What this legislation does is authorize $1.66 billion, $1.66 billion in investments that will improve and modernize the technology that our residents and our businesses count on here in Massachusetts. These investments will keep our IT systems up to date, safe and secure, as well as keeping them easier to use and more accessible. They will advance our work to modernize areas that are important to so many residents and businesses around the state. Our health records, access to unemployment insurance, uh, all sorts of data across all agencies and state government. They will also provide important funding to our cities and towns and school districts as well that have their own work to do in upgrading their own IT systems. They'll put us in a position as well to take advantage of emerging technologies. 
We've talked a lot about this administration's desire to lean into applied artificial, intelli uh, artificial intelligence in ways that benefit not only the way the state delivers services to residents and businesses, but also the way that our businesses and economic sector are able to, to thrive. And we think that making applied AI a cornerstone of our economic development plan is really important. It's further supported through this Future Tech Act. We're already seeing the benefits of some of that, as um, some of you were with us at an announcement recently with Northeastern students and the work that our team through Secretary Snyder and Secretary Howe have done in our Artificial Intelligence Task Force, working with students at Northeastern to pioneer AI technologies that we can now implement right away in state agencies to better uh, deliver customer service. But bottom line, um, this is about Massachusetts, this is about who we are, this is about really important investments in technology, in innovation, that are gonna help best position us to do what we need to do to improve life, to improve our economy, um, to make sure that Massachusetts is the best place to work, live, and raise a family. I wanna thank everyone across the administration, in particular, Secretary Snyder and his team, as well as Secretary Gorkowitz and his team in helping us to figure out what, what uh, we needed to do here. Want to thank members of our legislature uh, for their continued partnership on, on so many fronts and certainly on this and uh, really excited to, to be able to sign this, this piece of legislation um, with more to come. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to our great Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, Governor. We love bill signing season. <laughs> um, really appreciate everyone's partnership in this work and so great to see so many of our colleagues both in government, in the administration and in the legislature. You know, IT is no longer just this part of state government um, that we don't talk about. It's basic infrastructure that makes everything work. It's certainly the way that residents, both at the local level and the state level, engage with services now in top order. Um, as innovative a state as Massachusetts would like to be, we want to make sure we're also having a world-class customer service experience for residents and stay at the forefront. Uh, we need to make these investments to do so. And so we're really excited about what this bill means. As a former local official, we know we've got 351 cities and towns in the Commonwealth. Each one of them has to manage their own IT systems, worry about cybersecurity, uh, try to make sure their residents can get online and get the information they need to access services. Part of this bill, in addition to all the things the governor mentioned, are, are going to be resources to support cities and towns. Just a critical part of this Future Tech Act. As we know, cybersecurity takes on even more importance, and there's just less resources at the local level to ensure you have the types of protections and systems that you need. This bill in particular invests in our Community Compact, very popular Community Compact IT program. That's aimed at driving innovation to make local government more efficient, more accessible, a lot of regional opportunities there as we think about improving the IT services at the local level. That's also gonna save taxpayers money locally. The other key piece for cities and towns are the Municipal Fiber Grant Program. This allows communities to fill those final gaps uh, to ensure you have the connectivity you need locally to run networks that many residents depend on. It's only gotten better. We've seen the building blocks from prior uh, community compact and municipal fiber grants, and we're looking forward to continuing that investment. We all understand the role that technology plays in delivering services and also in keeping our schools the best in the state right now and ensuring that you have access to those services. Post-pandemic, everyone's got a laptop program. How do we stand it up, keep it safe, ensure it's running? Uh, well, the way we deliver our MCAS exams, all online, having those, those services is really critical. That's what these investments are about, ensuring that we're helping our community partners, continuing to be a leader in innovation, and delivering for the Commonwealth that we have the resources we need to tackle whatever those challenges are ahead. And there's nobody better to lead that effort than Secretary Snyder. He helps us every day embrace AI, ensuring that we're thinking about ways we can operate as a team better. And through this bill, he's going to have services to help every city and town, as well as state government, continue to be at the forefront of these programs. It's my pleasure to introduce Secretary Snyder. So this is pretty incredible, and it truly is a team effort. And I think it begins with thanking all of my incredible partners. Uh, this truly, everybody came together, this happened, and I just wanted to make sure I thanked everybody because it really was incredible. Um, everyone here today has shown that Massachusetts is truly one team. And when it comes to advancing the delivery of government services for our residents and for our state and municipal workers, information technology opens that digital door to meet, where people, to meet people where they are. 
The impact of IT on the services the Commonwealth provides cannot be overstated. To that end, we are already hard at work on many of the investments in this legislation. I'd like to especially call out the Digital Roadmap, a project which will revolutionize, revolutionize the way our constituents interact with government by focusing on all state services from a constituent perspective, organizing the way our services interact with people and their needs for all IT design. Similarly, our IT investment directly aligns with the focus on the people of Massachusetts. To highlight just a few of the over 100 additional projects the Future Tech, Tech Act supports, I'd like to call out first the Employment Modernization Transformation, EMT, project. It will provide both employers and those seeking unemployment insurance a new portal to conduct state-facing employment activities and will make it easier to apply for unemployment insurance. The Child Care Financial Assistant Modernization Project, which will improve the overall user experience and reduce barriers to families seeking assistance from the Commonwealth and ease administrative burdens on child care providers. The replacement of an EOHLC application that supports local housing authorities' most vulnerable residents, improving the ability to house all Massachusetts residents. And our final example, the Enhanced Student Financial Aid Access Project will simplify and support speedier application entry, which will facilitate college access for Massachusetts residents. This act will drive Massachusetts technology forward, which improves state services, not to mention the direct impacts the act provides municipalities in terms of grants and the tremendous opportunities AI funding will provide. These types of investments change lives in ways visible and invisible. And EOTS is so proud to work in the Healy Driscoll administration to advance government efficiency, promote accessible and equitable state services, and support our municipality IT needs. Thank you again to everyone who helped make this legislation and our vision for better IT services a reality. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Secretary Snyder. And I mean, look, the upshot here, folks, we're in a state, Massachusetts, we invented the computer. And, you know, uh, we have been a, a place of, of pioneering innovation and entrepreneurship from the very beginning, right? So it's only right that um, we once again come together and lean into to technology, and that's what today's important bond bill represents. So again, I am grateful to the chairs, the conferees for bringing this forward. It's a super important investment for our state and for our schools and our 351 cities and towns. Uh, we want to make sure that we have the best in terms of cybersecurity, and we want to make sure we have the best in terms of technology that's going to help residents around this great state. And what you heard from Secretary Snyder is, through this, we are taking action to make sure that we have the very best when it comes to people's ability to access using technology, child care. Thank you, Commissioner Kershaw from our Department of Early Education uh, and Child Care. So child care, accessing housing, accessing education and financial aid are just some of the things that we're doing. Also a big focus, because this administration is focused on equity, including regional equity, appreciate the work um, of partners from around the state to make sure that we were expanding the opportunity to get in place, particularly in places that haven't had the benefit to the same degree as others, the technology so that their residents are better able to go online and conduct business and, and live their lives. So really grateful to everyone today and um, thank you for um, Thank you for bringing this forward. With that, we're happy to take any questions on topic. Governor, can you just give some examples of the AI investments of Secretary Snyder and kind of the potential you see from those investments compared with the Economic Development Bill? Yeah. Well, I'm going to let Secretary Snyder handle that. Um, but I'll say this. You know, this, this is an important piece of legislation, this bill. It also sits within the context of other pieces of legislation and certainly part of what we propose through the Economic Development Bill and the Economic Development Plan are important investments that we think can be made in areas like climate technology, life sciences, and applied AI. I have a goal of making Massachusetts a global <laughs> hub for applied AI. And I say that because somebody is going to be there leading the way to figure out which state is going to be first 
to come up with cures for diseases? Which state is going to have the company, the companies that are going to be there to determine where we better build resilience for rising um, sea levels and the like? And that's the, the chase is on. And that's why earlier I signed an executive order to create that AI task force. It's why they're already coming to me with recommendations uh, from that effort, and it will fit nicely uh, within the work that will be in the funding for investments that will be further enabled through the work of the legislature. Thank you through this bond bill. But do you have anything sure, else you want to say? Um, also, I'd like to acknowledge my co-chair, Secretary Howe, uh, as part of the AI task force. It's, it's really critical and it's been a wonderful partnership. Thank you. So what we're seeing with AI, especially within state usage, which has been my primarily fo primary focus, is real work at taking AI and simplifying complex things and making processes easier and, and better to manage. Examples include grants management. Uh, a, a great example was with Highway Division, their uh, engineering department. They had a uh, very complex policy lots and lots of policy when you had to do anything like create a bridge or anything like that you had to spend weeks going through all the policy we were able to provide a front end uh, using ai to that policy check and now you can enter something as you know i want to create a bridge and it will come back with a series of policies that directly uh, impact making a bridge they said it's had saved them individually every project weeks and weeks and weeks of effort uh, other things include things like eligibility determination and other areas like that where it's complex policy or, or uh, complex data being simplified through AI. Well, um, it's really important, you know. I mean, from the beginning, we've been about making Massachusetts more affordable, more equitable, and more competitive. And it's absolutely uh, necessary that we be on the front cutting edge of technology and its implementation across state government and in how we assist our cities and towns in their implementation of technology and how we can better leverage this incredible ecosystem that we have in Massachusetts of technology companies. So this is exactly where we need to be, where we should be. Um, in terms of how things are spent, you know, everything will be done according to, I'm sure, a lot of discussion and prioritization. There are a lot of good things that, uh, that have the potential of being funded here. And, um, you know, we look forward to thinking through how best we can leverage these bond authorizations with budget, with other pieces of legislation that are hopefully going to come soon, economic development, for example, with federal funding. Remember, when we started, I set up a federal funds office. And just in the last 18 months alone, we have gone after, chased, and brought back to Massachusetts over $7 billion in federal funds that are leveraged with state funds that help us with things like infrastructure and transportation and climate and cyber and broadband and so much more. So it's all part, you know, of the puzzle here. But basically, you know, I think all of us, all of us here um, stand with urgency and intensity about, you know, getting this done and getting us um, to where we need to be and look forward to the investments that are really going to benefit our state and make us even more competitive uh, than we are right now. Jack Connors was a great friend to me personally and to so many across the state. I am heartbroken by his tragic and untimely passing. He's a person who used his power, any power he had, he used it to better the lives of others, especially the most vulnerable among us. And I think the best thing we can do to honor Jack Connors is to show it in our deeds, show it in our acts. And uh, as a person who was always there to step up, whose first question was, how can I help? Um, Jack Connors is, uh, is mourned and also remembered with great affection and admiration, and also, I think, incumbent upon people like me who, you know, um, who he mentored to make sure that we are living up to all that, uh, all that he saw in us and all the good and greatness he saw in this state.
bunch of homeless families out there today coming to Massachusetts with the hopes of a better life, and they're just kind of beside themselves like there's no way to go. Look, it's a heartbreaking situation. I have said from the outset, though, that Massachusetts has only so much capacity, and I am grateful for all who have stepped forward, our service providers, cities and towns who have welcomed people in, um, and I certainly don't want to see people out um, on the streets. But I've said that this is unfortunately a federal problem. This is a problem created by the inaction of, of Congress, and Congress needs to act. Um, we set a cap last fall. We established a wait list. Um, we also worked very, very hard to have new immigrants processed for work, and I'm proud of that work, that we've processed nearly 4,000 people who are working uh, right now in healthcare, hospitality, in factories, manufacturing around the state. But I've also been clear in saying for months now that we are reaching and have reached our limit. And um, for those who are in other states or other countries thinking that Massachusetts um, has an infinite supply of housing, the fact of the matter is that we don't. And I am very focused on making sure that we take the steps and shore up our existing emergency uh, shelter system. There are any number of families, remember half the families in shelter are families from Massachusetts, right? And we want to make sure that people are cared for and housed. Um, it's why we propose the significant housing bond bill, because we know we need more housing around the state. We've also, we've also prioritized families who, with particular vulnerabilities, children, families with medical conditions, and the like. So that's where we are right now. And again, I, I call on Congress to act. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, there is nothing that I can do to stop the closure of the two hospitals in particular that Stewart has announced its closing. Um, look, I've been in this space for a long time, including as Attorney General, and I can tell you that what Stewart has done, what Ralph Dilatori has done, is despicable. And, you know, we are, are paying the price for it right now. I will tell you my administration is continuing to focus on protecting jobs, protecting patients, and the stability of the market, and saving five other steward hospitals so that people in our communities can continue to receive care. It's terribly distressing. I understand that when a hospital in your community closes. Unfortunately, I don't have the power or the lever to stop that. That's a decision that steward makes. Um, certainly, though, we'll do everything we can to smooth a transition there. And I'll say this, we call on Steward right now, who has within its power the ability to work with us on a deal that would save those five hospitals to step up and act. And I call on their investment bankers to, uh, to, to, to do what is right and step up and act, because there's a way to save this right now. Massachusetts needs it. Our residents need it. The situation demands it, and that's what I ask of Stewart and its investors. Could this be put in a state receiver or anything? Like, how do you manage uh, the essential review process? Public well, not going to get you know, obviously there are rules and regulations that need to be followed, and I've said that. So our Department of Public Health and our Health and Human Services um, branch will continue to work on that and, and hold people accountable that way. But you know, I also know that. There is, a, there is something on the table right now that would help us to save five hospitals. That's what I want to do. That is what I want to see happen. And I demand that the lenders step up and do that. Thank you.